they call it, one light per per, per child. Um, I think the you know it's it's it, it's a it's a program that's been talked about even when I was a CIO of Plan International based in the UK and. I was responsible for IT for 66 countries, and back then everyone said, you know, hey, you know, this $100 laptop is going to revolutionize things. We are going to be able to have that in every country in, in no time, and it's going to make such an impact. I, I think this is, is, is one of those technologies, and, and I think it's the vision, the concept is absolutely wonderful. The people who put it together are absolutely had the right ideas, and, uh, and and I think it's something that resonated for, for many. And I love the term, one lap per, per child. It's so easy to understand what it means. Uh, the issue has been over the years, the laptop is, 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 is not the solution. It's the content that goes on that. It's the applications that go on that. It's the how do you use it. So, I mean, putting a, a rugged laptop out there um, that doesn't uh, have uh, access to the Internet or to content or to the diskettes and everything is, 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 is an issue. And I think it's something that's plagued the program as long as they've been there. Um, I think you've seen major partners like Intel and, and others have, have gotten out of, um, you know, the, the partnership at, at various stages. So I would say it's, it's, it's a great concept, but it's something that's really struggling. Um, where, you know, as we see now that, uh, something with the, uh, the iPad, is, is, is very much, you know, if you could get the cost of something that down, this whole concept of the iStore, of having applications that you can download and share. Um, and as I understand it, the OLPD is coming up with their own version of the, uh, of the iPad, uh, personal device. And, uh, perhaps that's the kind of, uh, revolutionary technology that, that they could actually put it into the hands of, uh, of more. Uh, because as we see a lot in the field, it's, you know, is, is it the laptop? Is it the, um, uh, is, is it the mobile phone? Uh, what's going to win, if you will? And, and it's situational. Various countries are going to be different based on their regulations and what's available and what's, uh, what, what's accessible. So you mentioned there too, uh, mobile technologies, Kelvin, and they seem, we're hearing more and more about those in terms of development work. Uh, what are your feelings about those? What impact do you think that mobile uh, is likely to have or is having now and is likely to have in the future? Mobile technology is already uh, having a major impact in, in, in many places. Um, I mean, we have uh, you know, there's, there's situations uh, already where uh, people are able to, uh, to, to leverage the, 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 the mobile phones that are out there. Uh, they become almost ubiquitous. You have countries that... Uh, in Africa, and in the last five years, have gone from maybe 10% of the population to 90% with this device. So, it, it has to be a player in in whatever goes forward. I, I think we also though have to keep in mind that many of these are dumb phones still. So, so, so they are not because of uh, the bandwidth, because of costs, the 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 entire intelligent smartphones that we are used to at, at, at our end. So, when applications are designed and developed, you have to take that in in in, in, in in mind. Uh, one, you know, a couple of examples I've, I've seen is, is people, you know, uh, leveraging the, even the, 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 uh, the, not the smartphones, the, uh, the, the basic phones to be able to do key, uh, data entry, uh, into, uh, in, into, into, into programs so that, uh, that, you know, it eliminates the, the, the need to, to take paper and key punch it and, 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 and such or transmit uh, information. I think one of the great applications we've seen recently is with the Red Cross in Haiti. Um, there's an application called Terra that allowed uh, uh, allows transmission of, uh, of text messages uh, to, uh, to mobile phones. So they were able to uh, target uh, people when the cholera epidemic was coming out to tell them where uh, the epidemic was or where there's issues, where the clinics were, and they actually managed to put that as sort of a two-way, so people could report issues. Um, so I think that's basically the kind of uh, example of saying, leveraging what's there and the, the opportunity to have this ubiquitous technology, uh, and then use that to, to be able to uh, share information. And I think much of it is around sharing information and knowledge. Thank you. And another area that we're interested in uh, is the outsourcing uh, of jobs to developing countries. 
uh, that uh, that it now becomes more and more possible with technology. We're seeing uh, we're seeing as connections become faster uh, that it's more possible for these jobs to be outsourced. So is this uh, is this a, a development that you're aware of, and have you got any thoughts about it? Well, I think we've seen the uh, you know it, it, the amazing uh, growth of the uh, the IT sector in India. You know, we very much started with uh, outsourcing uh, uh, various uh, you know, uh, tasks and smaller, uh, potentially, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was smaller parts of the IT organizations often, um, and has grown into a major, major uh, business area, uh, which has helped to spur on education. Um, there's massive campuses there now, with, and some of, uh, I think they're, they're uh, more graduates in IT than probably you know many places in the world. So I think uh, that the outsourcing is something that uh, is, is progressing, and now we see it progressing to different countries and creating economies in different countries that weren't there. I think Nigeria has uh, is, is, has 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 outsourcing. We see a lot of people putting call centers into the uh, into the Philippines um, right now because of language and other elements. And uh, last year I was in. Um, in uh, Kenya and uh, Nairobi, and I was actually uh, <coughs> we, we met hope helped to host a conference uh, around outsourcing in Nairobi. So, and the reason is that they've now got the uh, the cable, the new uh, internet, uh, wired, so that uh, you know, a lot of countries are able to get better access to the internet. So that's creating a whole new industry in in in, in, uh, in Nairobi, Kenya, and and they are actually looking at the model of uh, of India to to help. You know, train their citizens and their students and, and such. And, and 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 the interesting, I mean, some of the things I hadn't even heard of or thought of in terms of what they're outsourcing. But it, apparently, you can basically ship them a container worth of uh, your records, um, and they will actually key punch everything into uh, into the into the system, so that uh, you're able to take uh, you know, the paper based. And uh, and get that, uh, and it's cheaper than OCR or anything else because of labor rates. Thank you. And uh, you're one of the founders of NetHope, Kelvin, and uh, NetHope clearly a very valuable organization. Uh, can you tell us a bit about uh, how NetHope was established and and the role that you played there? Yes, uh, NetHope.